Good evening. I'm Sir Gareth Pelt. In 1965, Carl Walsh Springs, founder and president of the TBQ, or Toxic Broadcasting... No one was ever really quite sure what the Q stood for, decided to bring a different type of soap opera to his television network. People had become tired of the standard formulaic show that dealt only with sex, greed, or murder. So Carl Botch Springs brought them all to one show, Misty Dawn. The show ran on a weekly budget of $87.50. There was no live editing in 1965, so if you watch ever so closely, you might detect minute errors here or there. Now, only 78 of the original 1,204 episodes survive. We will show episode one in its entirety, exactly the way it was shown on September the 21st, 1965. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that we introduce Misty Dawn, episode one. Carter, put down that phone. Uh, yeah, I'll call you back, JC. I got a little thing here. Uh, say hi to your lovely wife, Jeannie, for me. She'll remember me. <laughs> What's that? Uh, no, no, we never met. Uh, right, right. Yeah, yeehaw, you too. Okay, yeah, goodbye. What in tarnation are you going on about, Ricky? Can't you see I've got a business to run? You've gone too far this time, Potter. You've gone too far. Oh, what did I do, pray tell? You sent 16 families into poverty. You took their houses, you took their land, you took everything. Now, Ricky, those people owed us money. We gave them ample opportunity to pay us back. 30 minutes isn't ample opportunity. You know, I think you should be a little happier, little brother. I mean, we got us a Texan in the White House, we're richer and rot, and just three days ago, we had a gusher shoot through that old family graveyard. Things are going great. The oil's coming right to our front door. I think you're being just a little bit... What is it, Darla? There's a man here to see you. Not now, Darla. I'm busy. But he's insistent. Okay, send him in. You're not through here, Potter. He says that he's your uh No sale. <laughs> cousin. Cousin. Cousin? What cousin? Cousin Barabbas Childress. Uh, that'll, that'll be all, Darla.
So, Barabbas, children. Yes. Never heard of you. I'm from the European side of the family. I didn't know we had any family still left in Europe. I'm the last of the European childresses. Well, I'm Ricky. And this is, yes, I know, Potter Childress. Oh, you got that mighty right, sir. I am Potter Childress, Presidente of Childress Oil. Ricky here is Vice President. And, um, who is this little oh, person? This is, uh, Kaka O'Hanley. My, uh, whatever. I found him when I was traveling through, well, who cares, hmm? <laughs> Say hello, Kaka. Uh, it is a pleasure to meet you, sirs. I, uh, I actually, uh... Uh, that's enough, Kaka. Ah. So, cousin. What brings you here, and uh, why so late at night? I decided to look up my relatives, and I always conducted my business at night. I've decided to return, uh, move to Misty Dawn and live in the old house, if that's permissible with you, sir. The old house? I don't want to live in the old house. It's an eyesore. Ah, uh, contraire, cousin. Lakewood Villa holds a great charm for me. It's a... What do you do, Barabbas? For a living, I mean. I uh, work in cardboard. Cardboard? <laughs> cardboard? What the devil can you do with cardboard? A multitude of things. Such as? Such as, well, it would take me all night to relate to you the splendors of cardboard. Now, a bad house. I was hoping. I still that. don't see how a person can make money from cardboard. Be that as it may, gentlemen, about the house. Oh, the house, the house. We'll talk about that over lunch tomorrow. Oh, I unfortunately cannot attend a lunch on tomorrow. I have a pressing engagement elsewhere. Where? Do you two ever quit with the questions? <laughs> I have to travel to Del Nacho's tomorrow to sign a contract <laughs> for some cardboard. <laughs> Del Machos hasn't been to town in over a hundred years. Of course, no. Um, we're meeting where Del Nachos used to be. It's the halfway point. Oh. Yeah. Where's your guy coming from? Where's the uh, nearest town still standing? Dunsville? Dunsville. That's it, Dunsville. Yes, he's coming from Dunsville. Any more questions? Well, what'd you say your name was again? Barabbas. Barabbas. Well, Barabbas, you're going to have to ask our mama about using that old house. It's been a barn since, well, before I was born. Before I was born, too. Does your mother still reside in the Childress Manor? Uh, yes. The family has lived there for centuries. Of course. I've studied family history for ages. I see. Well, you're going to have to ask her. Uh, she should be home now. Uh, we're wrapping up here. Uh, why don't you follow me and Ricky over there? I'm sure she'd love to meet a new relative, especially one from... Uh, Where'd you say you were from again? Europe. Yes. Europe. No, I'll have to make it tomorrow night, gentlemen. Um, I must retire early for my trip to Dripsville, Dorksville, Dunsville. We understand. Uh, tomorrow night, then? I'm looking forward to it, shall we say, about 8 o'clock. That'll be fine. 
until tomorrow night, gentlemen. I bid you a fond good evening. Good night. Good night. Kaka. Sir. Wow. He's sure a piece of work, isn't he? Yes, he is. I don't trust him. Why not? I don't know. There's something odd about him. Now that you mention it, I have to agree. When I shook his hand, it was like shaking hands with a snow cone. And he said lunch on. Well, I reckon we'll find out tomorrow night exactly what he's up to. Little Jake! Oh, sweetie, where have you been? Do you know what time it is? I have been worried sick about you. I was talking about a boy in my school man. A man? What man? I don't know, just a man. Well, what did he look like? He was tall and wore a black cape. A black cape? What have I told you about telling tall tales, young man? Well, I'm not. I'm really so tall. Little Jake, please. <sighs> tall tales. And that sounds like a pretty tall tale to me. But Grandma! Oh, Jake, there you are. I've been looking all over for you. Well, he's been playing down at that old barn again. Really, Sonny, I thought when I hired you that all of his mindless frivolities would just stop. And they have just gotten worser and worser. Something wrong, Mrs. Childress? No, nothing. Why would you ask? It's just... It's just that what? You seem preoccupied lately. Preoccupied? Preoccupied? Yes. Well, you've been pacing the floor a lot lately, and you just... I just what? You just don't smile like you used to when I first started working at Childress Manor. <laughs> well, Sonny, you've only been here for three days. I know, but so much can happen in three days. Such as? I don't know. You can read a book in three days. Or go around the world in three days. Before you can fall in love in three days. <laughs> or you can fall out of love in three days. Hello, Decatur. Hello, Frisco. Little Jake, why don't you run up to your bedroom for Grandma, okay? Okay. I'll let him stay, Frisco. Aren't you going to give your mama a hug? He's growing. Yes, he is. Aren't you going to introduce me to your friend? Oh, I'm so sorry. Sonny, this is Decatur Childress, Potter's wife. Decatur, this is Miss Sunny Vale, Will Jake's new governess. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Childress. Mm. I so, have you met my lecherous husband yet? No. I've been so busy with little Jake lately that I haven't had time to meet the other members of the family yet. Sonny has just arrived. Mm, I know, I heard. I'm sure you'll be meeting Potter real soon. He'll take to you like flies to a diving board. I don't understand. Well, you see flies, they like to... No. Why do you say things like that about your own husband? Husband? <laughs> <laughs> oh, speak of the devil. Why, hello, honey. <laughs> Are you feeling all right, dear? When did you ever care about how I was feeling? Oh, I don't really. I just noticed it was after 8 o'clock and you're still coherent. Not because I want to be. That's my girl. Hello, Mama. Hello, Potter. Hi, Mama. Oh, there is my cutesy wootsy itsy bitsy baby boy. Oh. I would like you to meet Miss Sunnyvale. Hello. Well, hello to you. Ah, this is indeed a pleasure, Miss Vale. Mm, 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 mm. Please, call me Sunny. Sunny, that's a nice name. Well, what brings you here, Sunny? Sunny here is little Jake's new governess. Mm. 
the governess, eh? Well, I'm looking forward to having, uh, getting to know you. My name is Potter, and this is my little brother, Rick. I'm... Ricky, I know. How'd you know? Your pictures are all over the house. You were an all-American ping pong player at the University of Texas at Mockingbird Lane. Yeah, well, that seems like a long time ago now. It was last week. Oh, Mama, guess what? What? Ricky and I ran into a cousin of ours today. A cousin of which cousin? Uh, Barabbas Childress. Barabbas Childress? That's what he said his name was. He said he's from the European side of the family. Barabbas Childress? What's wrong, Mrs. Childress? Well, it's just that the only Barabbas Childress I know of is our ancestor, Barabbas Childress. Well, maybe this is him. No, no, that would be quite impossible. Why? Because he's been dead for 160 years. A hundred and sixty years? This guy looked dead, sure, but not a hundred and sixty years dead. Surely this must be a different Barabbas Childress. Well, I've never heard of another one, and as far as I know, there are no more Childress in Europe. He looked awfully familiar. Like I'd seen him somewhere before. He did, didn't he? He probably just resembled someone that you rooked out of their money. No, that's not it. I'd remember that. No, it's somebody I've seen around here somewhere. Excuse me. What is it, Miss Del Rio? I was wondering if one of the gentlemen could give me a hand. I'm sure my husband would love to help you out. Wouldn't you, dear? Well, <laughs> anything I can do. What happened, Miss Del Rio? I was cleaning the portrait of Mr. Barabbas Childress when it slipped off the wall. The, the portrait! That's him! It sure is. What in the world are you two boys going on about? That's him, Mama. That's who? Cousin Barabbas. Well, of course it is. He's one of your ancestors. No, I mean, that's the Cousin Barabbas that walked into my office tonight. Tell her, Ricky. He's right, Mama. That man walked into Potter's office tonight. That's impossible. He's been dead for 160, 160 years, I know, but that's sure him. I don't understand. None of us do, sweetie. Welcome to Childress Manor. You two boys had better not be up to one of your pranks. We're not, Mama. Ricky's right. If you don't believe us, you can ask him yourself. Because we invited him over for dinner tomorrow night. Me. I'm sorry. I was looking for my dog, Ringo. Oh.
Don't be afraid. My name's Nancy. Nancy Childress. I live over at the Childress Manor. Are you related to Pato Childress? He's my big brother. Do you know him? Yeah. Uh, no. Say, did you hear that loud? <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I frighten you? Uh, a little. That's just how I call my dog. When I howl like a wolf, Ringo knows it's me. I see. Would you like me to walk with you? Oh, no thanks. I'll just live down the road a little place. Over in Portville? Yeah. Oh. What's it like living in Portville? It's okay. Keen. Well, I better be off, or I'll never find Pepper. Wait, I thought you said your dog's name was Ringo. I did. Ta-ta. Take care of the body, Kaka. Drag it into the woods. What'd you go and do that for? She hasn't done nothing to you. She hasn't done anything to me. That's what I said. Why'd you have to kill her? She ain't guilty of nothing. She's not guilty of anything. Hmm? That's what I said. Kaka, 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 why must you always question? Everything I do. It's, it's just... Kaka! You know I must feed you. I must have sustenance or I cannot survive. You know this. And still, you must always ask me why. Now, drag the body into the woods. Hmm? Now! Come to the old house when you are done. Dear Mary Alice, I start this first entry by calling you Mary Alice instead of Diary. Diary seems so dreary and impersonal. Mary Alice, on the other hand, is a really keen name. My sister's name was Mary Alice. She was named after our father. Anyway, Mary Alice, I am beginning my fourth day here at Childress Manor, and already strange things have started to occur. Little Jake has seen a man in a black cape skulking around the old house. 
Potter and Ricky swear that a European cousin of theirs is the same man whose portrait hangs in the foyer. Or is it foyer? I'm not really sure. And why are some vases while others are vases? Hmm. It sure is puzzling. Anywho, the man in the portrait was born 200 years ago. And you and I both know that very few people live to be 200 years old. I've met most of the family now. I finally met Potter and Ricky last night. Ricky is really dreamy, but Potter is sort of, well, scary. Potter's wife, Decatur, seems very unhappy. That's probably why she drinks so much. I haven't met Nancy yet either. She is Potter and Ricky's 18-year-old sister. I'm looking forward to meeting her. Well, I gotta go now. I'm helping little Jake with his arithmetic today. You know what they say. We have to learn the three R's. Reading, writing, and arithmetic. That didn't make any sense to me at all. I mean, writing and arithmetic don't even begin with R. Somebody really dumb must have made up that saying. What do you think? Anyway, right back. Toodles! Decatur. Uh, she's in her room sleeping it off as usual. Uh, so, you excited about tonight? Tonight? You know, about meeting Cousin Barabbas. Oh, that. I suppose. I have to admit I am a little apprehensive about that. Well, why? Oh, I don't know. It just seems very strange, very surreal. Hmm. Surreal? Hmm. Good morning, Mama. Oh, good morning, darling. You look beautiful now, Nancy. Do not forget your school books. Oh, Mama, I'm not a complete thief, you know. Oh, no, I know you're not, darling. <laughs> <laughs> what? Nothing. Oh, uh, where's that girl? I forget her name. The one that's helping little Jake with the studies, uh... Sunny. Sunny, yeah. What's the matter, little brother? Meet the Sunny knock the memory right out of you? No, I just forgot her name, that's all. Yeah, sure. Come to think of it, I haven't met her yet. I'm sure you will soon, dear. Well, I better get down to the office before Sam Austin or Jack Houston tries to steal our company out from under us before I can steal theirs out from under them. You coming, Ricky, you taking your own car? I'm coming. I better go too. Steve will be here any second to pick me up. Okay, dear. Have a good day. Bye, Mom. Bye, Mom. Bye, kids. Wait! What is it, Mom? You forgot things. Oh, Mama, you shouldn't have. Oh, well, what else can I do now that you're all grown up? Nancy, yours has extra jelly. Oh, really, Mama? Ricky, I had Miss Del Rio cut the crust off yours just like you like it. Oh, thanks, Mama. <laughs> Potter. Thanks, Mama. Bye. Bye, Mama. Bye-bye. Wait! What is it, Mama? Nothing. How the devil is that devil 
going to live down here. I wonder what would happen if I were to drag your monster's hide out into the sunlight, eh? No! No, I swear! I swear I wasn't going to do it! No! 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 There you have it, Misty Dawn, episode one. The day the pilot was shown, September the 21st, 1965. Very few people actually watched. And episode two, even fewer. But something happened. Little by little, the low-budget television show caught on. Well enough to spin off two movies and a cartoon. Even the short-lived return to Misty Dawn, a feeble, I must admit, attempt to recapture the essence of the original, has even started to catch on with today's television audience. Stay with us as we continue to bring you more episodes of Misty Dawn. Until next time, dear viewers, I'm Sir Gareth Pelt, wishing all of you a very Misty Dawn.